Visual commentary on scripture is a very unusual conversation. It's a conversation with the biblical text in the company of great art. And that involves at least three academic disciplines. Theology, which uh, is my own academic specialism, uh, which thinks about the, the living tradition of Christianity as something that's still alive in the present. Biblical studies, which looks at the text of the Bible and considers its language and the history of it, of it as a text. And art history, which uh, you, uh, Jennifer, represent and thinks about the great works of art that have often interpreted the Bible. And we're surrounded by examples of that here in the National Gallery today. That conversation is something that we embody as we sit here on our leather bench. Um, but we, we've chosen a work of art that also shows a kind of conversation going on, a three-way conversation between Jesus and two disciples. And what better to introduce the visual commentary on scripture than with this painting by Michelangelo Merisi da Caravaggio. He is a painter born and bred in Milan, trained in Milan and Caravaggio, and he comes to Rome, then the kind of artistic center of Italy. He arrives in 1592. By the time he paints this in 1601, he's been in that city for a while. He's established his reputation, in particular for beautiful, radically naturalistic still lives, like uh, bowls of fruit, for example. So a great example of that. Yeah. Yes, and here we have him painting instead uh, a biblical scene. This is the Supper at Emmaus. And this, is, of course, is a narrative recounted in the Gospel of Luke. And this is a moment where two disciples are making their way from Jerusalem to Emmaus. After Christ has died. After Christ has already died and resurrected, and they are joined by the figure of Christ, but of course they don't recognize him. He's incognito. That's right. The uh, narrative is told in Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, and this particular episode happens in 13 to 35. Already at the beginning of the chapter, some women have gone to Jesus' tomb and found he isn't there. This narrative picks up on the same day two disciples who are leaving Jerusalem and they're walking away recounting these strange events some women have told them when Jesus himself catches up with them. And as you said, they don't recognize him. As they approach the village of Emmaus, evening is drawing near. And so the two disciples invite Jesus to stay with them. And this is the moment in verses 30 and 31, where they sit down at the table, Jesus breaks the bread, and their eyes open, and they realize who he is. Caravaggio loves moments of maximum tension, doesn't he? And that, so he's chosen a moment which is simultaneously one of, of recognition, and it's about to be a moment when Jesus vanishes. A phantos uh, in the Greek. He's gone, he's, he's, he's vanishes. So you've got this sense of enormous kind of, and slightly peculiar um, simultaneity of seeing and being about to again have sight taken away from you. The, 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 the kind of double impetus of, of revelation and then back into mystery again. And I think Caravaggio's fascinated by both what his painting can convey of insight, of revelation or disclosure, but also what it kind of holds back and what it takes away. There are certain things that are kind of hard to see in, mm. in this image. Even the bread which he's just broken is partly concealed behind the roasted bird on the table. And, um, and there's something about Jesus' own appearance that's pretty strange in terms of what we're used to in Western art. Actually, yes, as you say, Caravaggio makes his work. I wonder if Caravaggio had this in mind when he decided to paint a beardless Christ. Mm. Um, traditionally, in the, in the history of art, we expect to see young beardless Christs in the early Christian tradition, in the Byzantine tradition. By this time period, um, we rarely, rarely see a beardless Christ. Of course, Michelangelo had done it and some of Leonardo's followers in the previous century, but by the 17th century, that's exceptionally rare. And I wonder if that's a deliberate choice on behalf of the artist to signify a kind of destabilizing, unusual mm. thing. This is not someone who is easily recognizable until this key moment, as you described, the breaking of the bread and this moment of recognition. That's really bringing out uh, what's in the text with this sense of they're actually unable to see him. They're prevented from seeing him. The verbs krateo and epigonosco, prevented from seeing. There's a shorter account of this at the end of the Gospel of Mark in chapter 16, verse 12, where it says Jesus appeared to uh, disciples 
in a different form. Mm. But here, there's a sense of them not recognizing him. But at this moment at the table, it says that their eyes are made fully open when they recognize him. And there is the sense of him having opened up the Hebrew Bible to them, the words of Moses and the prophets, the Torah and the Nevim, and inside their hearts are burning when they hear this. So it's a moment of spiritual recognition as much as physical, literal recognition of who he is. I think there's another very interesting way that um, Caravaggio is interpreting this text in paint. Um, he's very known for his use of light and dark, or chiaroscuro. And in many of these paintings, this one included, you can often look to see where the very bright shafts of illumination are falling. And he's using that as a kind of metaphor for this idea of illumination, knowledge, awareness. So for example, you have the, the face of Christ bathed in light. And of course, one of the disciples at the far right completely bathed in light. And he's making this dramatic gesture as he realizes who he's at the table with. And he's pushing his arms out in this extraordinary way, almost kind of pushing against the picture plane, coming out of the picture. So this, I think, is one of the things that, that also creates a point of contact between Caravaggio's interpretation um, in this visual medium and the text itself, the, the sense of um, breaking the space. So just as the biblical text is about the, the initial challenges of recognizing Christ, what Caravaggio gives us in this painting is also a sort of challenge throwing back the question of whether we recognize this figure, and if so, how, and if we do recognize him, what kind of response are we going to have? And I think that's very much what we're trying to do with the VCS. We're trying to kind of reignite those conversations. We're inviting people to the table. We're asking them to debate across their disciplines, across their interests, across their levels of knowledge of all of those things, and to see what they bring every time they encounter a work of art. That puts it perfectly, because in a sense, we're not engaged just in an exercise in the history of art, or indeed in the history of the text, but we want to bring into the present um, the ongoing life and interest of this great historical text, the Bible, and also uh, the, the hundreds of years of, of art which we also inherit, and to show how both of them come alive together in the present moment, not just as historical artifacts, but things that break out and continue to have life and be inspiring in our present day.